Welcome to the panel presented by Sportcheck on location at Studio 99, a great place for some good guys. And that's why I'm standing here alongside Jack Michaels and Bob Stauffer. Guys, the home opener is tonight. They're playing the same Boston team they played last week. A little different circumstances, though. They were coming off their road trip in Europe. And this time, a huge comfort behind victory against the Jets. What kind of momentum can we see early on in this game, Jack? Well, for the Oilers, they hope they can carry forth the momentum they brought on Tuesday night and their dramatic come-from-behind win in Winnipeg. I mean, I can't think of a tougher set of circumstances than on the road against the league's best team at home last year, down three with 20 to play, and the Oilers are able to come up with the goods and get a win. I mean, it's the first time in five years. That doesn't happen that often in the National Hockey League. So to get that and come into the home opener at 2-2 two and two instead of 1-3 and three really kind of elevates and electrifies the room a little bit. Sure, they're going to be juiced because it's the home opener, but coming off that victory, Edmonton's got to be excited at getting another crack against the Boston Bruins, who will be on the second of a back-to-back. -back. That's the one thing about this stretch of games against 100-point clubs is Edmonton, in its first two home games, will be getting teams on the back end of a back-to-back. You know, uh, Tony, for me, I mean, one of the things is just the mindset also in the building, right? Like, I mean, when it's 4-1 against Winnipeg, you know what was out there on Twitter. You know what the reaction was like with the fans. There was nervousness and apprehension. But then when you see your team rally the way the Oilers rallied, if you're a fan, you're like, hey, that gives you a sense of belief that things can be accomplished. And I think as a result, the spirit in the building tonight, I expect to be really good because I think there are, well, the fans will have an appreciation. The Oilers, you know, they had it as it's turned out. Maybe we've underestimated how good New Jersey was, the way they've handled things. You know, tough opening game against New Jersey. They played okay in Boston. Boston was a little bit better, but the owners played okay in that game. Found a way to win in New York. Wasn't a pretty game. Afternoon games are tough, especially for young teams. And then the rally against Winnipeg was, you know, it was electrifying and it was exciting. And Jack had some great calls with that, but uh, it was a beauty to be a part of. And then to come back home, well, now you get a build on that. So uh, I think the fans are going to play a factor in it too. I think it's, it creates a whole different mood around the city as well. I think it's safe to say that the momentum was spearheaded by their captain, number 97, who set an NHL record being involved in the first. You are the goals. master of understatement, aren't you? <laughs> I am, I am for sure. But... He's so modest in his answers. He's always a team first guy. So I guess we have to kind of pick up the slack and just talk about how incredible that feat is. Well, I mean, it is an incredible feat, but Connor McDavid actually makes a subtle good point. And he goes, you know, I don't know how great of an achievement it is in light of the team perspective. In other words, even he recognizes the need if the Oilers want to get where they want to be, if they want to join for instance, that group of 100-point clubs I was talking about, they're going to need more than just Connor McDavid on any given night. But there's no question about it. I mean, Bob talks about the energy in the building. Look, it's fun to have an original six team in the building tonight. You could probably make an argument the Bruins on one line have three of the top 25 players in the league, but the Oilers have the best player in the league, the best player on the planet, and he shows it every night on both sides of the puck. And that's why Todd McClellan uh, can appreciate his talents because he knows there's no box that Connor McDavid doesn't check. However, he's going to have to check another one tonight because, as I mentioned, Boston boasts arguably the top line in the entire National Hockey League. You know, Tony, Jack and me, we don't agree on everything. There's a little bit of separation in age, but the one thing we do agree on is the most... Uh, a little bit? A little, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Today it feels like a lot, but uh, anyhow, I digress. So one thing we agree on is we think the greatest athlete ever was Bo Jackson. And every time Bo Jackson touched the ball in football, especially people were on their seats and because he was that electrifying because of his explosiveness. And when, when what we're seeing with Connor McDavid, like when we were in Winnipeg, as that game wore on, the fans knew it. You could feel a nervous apprehension in the building. We're privileged to watch it on a nightly basis. And you mentioned that, you know, Connor's a very modest fellow. The Oilers do need some secondary scoring production. I just, you know, I just the, the privilege of getting a chance to see it and seeing a guy just drive it all game long. But there were some good other things that happened in that third period of that game as well. I thought that Leon Dreisaitl and yes, Paul Yarby had some good moments together. Even Milan Lucic with Ryan Strom. Ryan Strom, I thought, had a little bit of energy going late. So we'll look to see if that continues tonight. They also do have a tough matchup again tonight against the Boston Bruins. Very quickly, guys, a guy like uh, Patrice Bergeron, 13 points. David Pasternak, 9 points. Brad Marchand, 11 points. It's such a tough test to start off a four-game homestand very quickly. Guys, how important is this, especially with Nashville on Saturday? 
Pittsburgh on Tuesday and uh, Washington on Thursday. Well, it's a four-game homestand against the league's elite. And, you know, if the Oilers want to get into a position where they're not chasing the season, they're going to have to weather it, and they're going to have to find a way to get maybe five points out of a possible eight against that quartet of opponents. It won't be easy, even though you're on home ice and even though you're getting opponents on the second of a back-to-back, and Todd McClellan's probably hoping for six points out of that possible eight. But the bottom line is, as you mentioned, Boston has one of the league's uh, best lines, has a goalie in Yaroslav Halak who has good career success against Edmonton and played very well in last week's win over the Oilers. But that was in Boston, and as we talked about, it's a bit of a different Edmonton club, and you know it'll be a charged-up atmosphere. Bruins are 1-2 and two on the road. Uh, the two losses for Tuka Ras. Kalak's got a 960 save percentage. Oilers are going to have to find a way to get some pucks to him early. Absolutely. Halak, 1.18 goals against average and a 961 save percentage so far this year. For Jack and Bob, you can hear their call on 630 Ched tonight. I got you covered right here on Oilers TV. This has been the panel presented by Sportcheck.